they, they can say we're cleaning up the mess. They can have whatever talking points they want out of this White House. But guess what? It turns out that when you have one area that is just a highway for illegals and there is some structure there that is a barrier, you can make that a better structure if it has any holes in it or actually the real issue is gaps in it. And then it is harder for the gotaways. It is harder for the cartels to run their drugs and their human smuggling operations. And it's even harder for people to surrender to Border Patrol because they can't get to the U.S. side to turn themselves in and pretend they're asylum seekers. So walls do work. Not a shock, unless you're a Biden voter, in which case you're like, wait a second. They're they're making Trump's wall. Yes, they're helping out with a piece of Trump's wall. Walls work It's the most obvious thing imaginable. You can point to so many of them throughout history. Hadrian's Wall, the Great Wall of China, the walls around Pelosi's mansion in San Francisco, etc., etc. A lot of walls throughout history. And we were told for a period of time under the Trump administration by the lib media that walls don't do anything at the border, to which... I was fascinated. So I went to the border. I went to the border in uh, at San Diego, Tijuana sector. I went down to uh, I went down to the Rio Grande sector and uh, went to. Gosh, I can't even remember all the places I've been along the border. Um, There there are four different spots I've been, all of which had some form of barrier in place. And every time uh, every time I was there. I asked Border Patrol, hey, do you guys think this, and gals, of course, do you think this wall, and it's a barrier, fence, sometimes double fence, it's, does this help? And they would all say, no question, this is helpful. There's no doubt this is helpful. And they, because people will say, oh, well, they can still get through. Okay, do you have locks on your doors, even though a really dedicated burglar could probably still get through? Do you have an alarm system, even though somebody who is skilled enough may in fact be able to, I mean, look, my own scooter, they broke the lock on my scooter and took it. Does that mean I don't lock up my little scoot scooter on the streets? Of course not. Got to lock it up. Here is Corinne Jean-Pierre of the Biden regime telling everybody, yeah, okay, so we got to fix some, the Trump wall in the Arizona sector, there's some holes in it, and there's a lot of traffic going through of illegals, so we're going to have to actually patch up those holes. If walls work in that part of Arizona, is this the administration trying to get migrants to cross somewhere else, like in Texas? What, what is the plan? We are not finishing a wall. We are cleaning up the mess that the prior administration made. We are trying to save lives. This is what, is, this is what the prior administration left behind that we are now cleaning up. Uh, actually, they're patching up some places in the wall. If you want to know what's going on here. They, they can say we're cleaning up the mess. They can have whatever talking points they want out of this White House. But guess what? It turns out that when you have one area that is just a highway for illegals and there is some structure there that is a barrier, you can make that a better structure if it has any holes in it or actually the real issue is gaps in it. And then it is harder for the gotaways, it is harder for the cartels to run their drugs and their human smuggling operations, and it's even harder for people to surrender to Border Patrol because they can't get to the U.S. side to turn themselves in and pretend they're asylum seekers. So walls do work. Not a shock, unless you're a Biden voter, in which case you're like, wait a second, they're they're making Trump's wall? Yes, they're helping out with a piece of Trump's wall. I had one other thing about, about the fences and, and border walls and all of that. As you know, we just heard a moment ago, I, I had the uh, audio played for you of Corinne Jean-Pierre saying that they're cleaning up the they're cleaning up the mess of the Trump administration by building part of the wall. It's, it's really amazing. They can say whatever they want, but they're building part of Trump's wall. And it's because border walls, uh, of course, work. Um, They're filling in some of these gaps here. And just so we can all understand 
how it is, because you may still come across a lib who goes, well, I don't think that they work. Yell at you. You say, well, hold on a second. They they do work, actually. So I don't know, buddy. You know, you get a big ladder or you get some of those things that make the cuts in the fence, whatever those are. And you get right through. I've been at, I've seen arrests happen at the wall uh, where people have tried to make a total run for it. They're not surrendering. I have actually been there when Border Patrol has to pull up on a bunch of guys. It's single adult males, sometimes in a group who do that, uh, who do the, uh, the try to be the, be the gotaways usually. Um, but sure enough, you know what happens when you try to scale a fence that's I forget how many feet it is, you know, 18 feet tall or 20 feet tall or whatever. Depends on the fence and, and where, we, where we are along the border. But you know what happens? You try to get up that and there are sensors and there are cameras. Border Patrol goes up. There's somebody who's illegally trying to scale the fence. And then what happens when the person tries to come down on the other side and they're usually coming down slowly because if they don't, they can really hurt themselves. Uh, border Patrol's waiting for them. But if you have nothing there, if there's just a line that's not even a visible line really in the dirt and someone can just make a run for it, that difference, especially around uh, urban areas of the country where there's urban places along the border, right? Like El Paso. I was at El Paso. And on the other side, you uh, uh, other side of El Paso right there, you can see um, Mexico very easily. And if they can get from the Mexican side across the, the border there, you're, you're in the city of El Paso in, in the blink of an eye. Right. Uh, You're actually able to get through very, very quickly. And once you're there, um, you know, once you leave, what is it, Juarez on the other side. Right. To get into El Paso, uh, you're you're, you're done. I mean, you're you're now in the U.S. Yes. uh, Juarez across the way, which was, I think, at one point, the per capita murder capital of the Western Hemisphere. So the drug cartel wars there were among some of the most horrific stuff seen anywhere in Mexico back in the uh, early 2010s, 2011, 2012, around there. Uh, but, of course, the, the fence works, the wall works. It does also remind me of this time. I went out to observe many years ago some of the uh, military, counter- ter- uh, military counterinsurgency, I should say, training at Fort Irwin. I don't know how many of you have ever been to Fort Irwin, but it's the nearest, I mean, Barstow feels like a metropolis compared to Fort Irwin because that's the closest city, and it's not that close. And they had a de- they had a desert tortoise problem at the fort. Now, here's what happens. You had this long road going into the fort, and they figured, um, well, the environmentalists got very upset. And the military, the Pentagon ended up spending, you could even, you can look this up, it's all, all out there in the public. I think it was $70 million to try to deal with the tortoise, uh, the desert tortoise issue. And the problem was that they had this road going into the base. I remember I got this, this briefing from the uh, base commander about this. Just, just about, you know, kind of like, a, hey, like, here's, the, here's where the bathrooms are, here's where the chow hall is. And by the way, let's talk about the desert tortoise for a little bit. So you had this uh, this road going into uh, Fort Irwin and you had the desert tortoises. And the problem is that sometimes the military uh, vehicles and if they were in any kind of a convoy, you know, the tortoise would go splat, basically, which is bad. We don't want tortoises to go splat. So what do they do? They built a little fence, kind of like a wall alongside the road. They built this fence alongside the road. And you think problem solved, right? Well, actually, no, because unfortunately, the desert tortoise isn't the most maneuverable of animals. And so it would go into the fence and it would kind of get stuck. And then predators, particularly, uh, I think it was uh, a a species of hawk or vulture, uh, would pick them off really easily. So you almost created this buffet line of tortoise in this fence all along this road going into this big military base. It's huge, too. I mean, they drop all kinds of ordnance out there. It's a huge uh, national training center, and the Fort Irwin's a, a, a massive complex. So they had to get better with the fencing. And so then they actually created um, little tortoise tunnels. And the tortoise tunnels were, were angled in such a way that they would go under the roadway so that the tortoise, even if it was leaning into the fence, would go under the roadway, would stay off the roadway. And this only cost us, along with plans to move the tortoise out of the range areas, etc., something like $70 million. So 
Fences work, but they're not perfect is the point, right? Whether you're a human or a tortoise, there are ways around a fence or there are ways the fence can be a problem. Um, but the Biden administration, sure enough, down in the Arizona sector, we got Blake Masters joining next hour, so I'll certainly ask him about this. Uh, they are completing a part of the uh, they're completing a part of the Trump wall because of course walls work. And uh, th- that was a that was a remarkable time. Right. When they were simultaneously yelling about the Russia collusion didn't exist and and shouting at you that walls work. It, it was uh, for me somewhat reminiscent of some of the slogans, the the absurd and mindless slogans that uh, the. Jacobin, the Jacobin uh, revolutionaries were saying to each other, you know, in in revolutionary era France, they were all about reason. And you say, well, hold on a second. You're all about reason. What what, you got? We got to change the calendars. We got to change the clocks. We got to change. That doesn't seem reasonable at all. Shut up. This is what we were told. And we're smart. We're the good people. So we do it. Didn't make any sense then. Doesn't make any sense now. But here we are.